All right. Good afternoon, all. Welcome. My name is Erin Lurie, and I'm the head of adult audiences. My pronouns are she, her. We're so delighted to be with you today and glad to gather virtually. I hope that those of you in the DC area will come and explore the absolutely incredible cutting garden right now, which provides our inspiration for today's arrangement. We will next gather for a floral workshop with Amy in October, and I'll be adding the link to that in the chat. Tickets are available on our website already. Um, and you are welcome to pre-order materials for that as well. In September, we'll be taking a pause on these floral um, arranging workshops, and instead we'll be having our very first pressed flower workshop, which has a lovely tie to our special exhibition, Grace of Monaco, Princess and Dior. Some quick notes about today's class. I'm gonna pass the, the torch over very shortly to Amy Wilbur. She'll go step-by-step step as she builds an arrangement. And as we go along, she'll pause and we'll ask for questions along the way. The best way to submit your questions is to use that chat feature. That's something that will allow us to make sure every question gets captured, even if it comes in um, in the midst of something else. So um, for those of you who are following along at home, whether you purchase materials from Hillwood or sourced your own from your garden or a lit local flower farm, we'll invite you to stay along and join us for my favorite part of these programs at the end where we'll do show and tell. So if you are creating an arrangement, please consider turning on your camera when you are done with it. You're welcome to stay on camera now or to stay shrouded in mystery until you have something gorgeous to show off. Um, and we'll invite folks to turn on their cameras and go ahead and share their arrangements. It's now my pleasure to pass us over to Amy Wilbur, who is Hillwood's floral and event decor designer. She has been with Hillwood since 2016. Amy, take us away. Hello, welcome everyone and happy August. Can't believe it's August already, but it um, is a wonderful time for our cutting garden, which is why we decided that we would do our workshop today based off uh, beauties from the cutting garden. And if you don't have your own cutting garden, uh, one of the things that you can do is go to your local flower market. Uh, I know that in DC, we have several um, of the farmer's markets and a lot of the local farmers have flowers that you can purchase um, from them. And for those of you who are in the DC area and who were able to get flowers today from Hillwood, they came from a farm uh, that's here uh, in the DC area called Willem Gardens. And we've been using their flowers for the past several years for our workshops. So we're always happy to have established a relationship with them. And you can find them also at the DuPont Farmer's Market on Sundays. And that's one of the things that I really love about this time of year and then also being able to create something that either you can purchase from you know, your local farm stand or you can go into your backyard if you're lucky to sort of forage around or if you have a garden to also then go in and uh, cut from your garden as well. So I'm gonna go through just kind of quickly the flowers that we have for today and what we're gonna be using. And then we're gonna go step by step. Uh, I decided this time around, I thought would be a fun uh, container for our flowers is this blue ceramic pitcher. And I just, I was thinking about, you know, what sort of feels like uh, something that you would find on your kitchen table in the summer uh, that you have you know, put your fresh cut flowers into. And I remember growing up, we always had some kind of pitcher like this um, at home that we would then put flowers into. So I thought it was kind of a fun way to mix it up with our containers that we typically use, but then also uh, something that would be, I think really kind of fun and functional for um, a lovely floral arrangement. So before we get started, I just wanted to go over real quick the flowers that we have, and then we're gonna kind of go through this thing and see what happens. So, 
in our bucket for today, these beautiful marigolds are here on the front. Um, ooh, that's really close. Uh, we have Rebecca or Black Eyed Susans. Um, and then here we have the Gomfrina. This is Celosia. This kind of Celosia is called Coxcomb. I really love these um, flowers because they kind of look like brains and they sort of feel like velvet. It's one of my favorites for the summer. Um, on this side, we have our zinnias. Then we have another celosia right here, which is a plume celosia. And then our greens for today are the basil. Um, and this is an African blue basil that we're using today. Um, it's something that's great because it goes into flower. It holds up really well in arrangements as well. And then for any of you who have this uh, um, picked up for today, you'll notice how amazing it smells as well. That's our little floral uh, introduction that we're going to do today. All right, so a couple of things. Um, I always use a Lazy Susan. So I have this up on a little ceramic pot so we're able to kind of see what's going on. Um, and then you can see it's nice because you can kind of turn the whole thing around. And also for today, uh, we're going to be doing a sort of all sided scenario with our arrangement. So having this um, lazy Susan really makes it easy to then kind of see what's going on on all angles. I have some chicken wire that's cut. I like to use the galvanized chicken wire. It just holds up a little bit longer than just regular chicken wire. And we use chicken wire because we don't use any floral foam. This helps to um, keep the stems uh, fresher, longer because they're sitting directly in the water. And then it's also much better for the environment. So I'm gonna go ahead, take my chicken wire and make a little scrunchy ball with it. And then I'm just gonna shove that in. And because it's a little bit um, obviously wider at the bottom of this base than it is at the top, I'm going in and kind of pushing out sort of the sides so that it really does kind of fill up the whole, whole bottom. I don't know if you can really, you can't really see that. Trust me, that's what's going on. Down it's a there. little hard to see, but we were able to see how you were using your hands yeah. and, and pull that open. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tape down my container. I'm using just a clear floral tape, which I like because you don't really see it. I do this so if I have to transport it, um, Nothing's gonna kind of pop out or go rogue on me. And then I like to run the tape along the edge of my container. And this just, you know, prevents it from really like popping out. You don't want the chicken wire also to pop out as well. So as you can see, I've just done a little bit of a crisscross, ran the tape around the entire edge of it. And then the most important thing is I'm going to add water to my container. I don't use any um, anything in my water, like any of the floral preserve or anything like that. But if you have those little packets that you get from, um, you know, sometimes see them at the grocery store or like packaged flowers, definitely feel free to uh, use those in your um, water. I just don't use it personally because I'm used to it. And we don't use anything that could stain uh, the inside of the mansion. So it's just easier for me to remember not to put anything in the water when I'm about to make an arrangement. All right, so I have my water in, taped, and we're chicken wired. So I am ready to go unless there are any questions about what we've done so far. We're good. Okay. None so far, but if you have questions at home, just a friendly reminder, please pop those into the chat and we will make sure that they get to Amy. And of course, um, I always like to have just a little safety warning. Your shears are very sharp, so just make sure not to have your fingers anywhere near them and that you start with all of the fingers that you have coming into this workshop. 
So what I'm going to do with this, because again, this is going to be an all sided arrangement, I'm going to start with my greens. And so in this case, my greens are my basil. I'm going to make sure that when I'm putting any of my greenery into the water, and this goes along for any of the flowers as well, that there are no leaves on the stem. So I have a nice clean stem that goes into the water. Um, as you can see, there are leaves that come all the way down. So I'm going to strip off the leaves. Oh, it smells so good. And as you can see, these are relatively big pieces of basil. So one stem, I'm not going to just put the whole stem in there because it's just gonna overwhelm the container a bit. You always want to think about having your flowers be about one and a half times the size of your container so that I wouldn't want to put like this whole thing in here because that would just sort of overwhelm the arrangement. And again, like I said, I've cleaned off all of the stems. And then one thing that I like to do is sort of look for pieces like this one has like a nice natural curve to it in the stem. And I'm gonna look for two pieces that I'm gonna use as sort of my guide points to how big the arrangement's gonna be. I like to call it like the architectural points of your arrangement. And that way you know how high and how wide your arrangement's gonna be. So it gives you an idea visually that you're not gonna go past a certain point with your flowers when you start to arrange. So again, like I said, I really like what's happening here. It's going this way naturally. So I'm gonna allow that to do its thing. I'm cutting everything at a nice sharp 45 degree angle. And then again, because this is going to be an all sided arrangement, I'm going to kind of start from the middle of my container and then I'm gonna work my way out. But I like that this is going slightly this way. And as you can see on both sides, it works. So from there, I'm gonna take this point and I'm going to then mimic it coming down this side. So I'm gonna look again. And if you look at this piece right here, again, this one has a nice sort of natural curve that goes this way. So I'm going to take off these lower stems and I'm gonna save them for later. And this big uh, flower right here, I'm not quite as excited about, so I'm just gonna snip that off, take off those bottom leaves. And again, now you can see that this is, when I'm going to put it into my container, it's gonna kind of naturally go this way. Again, nice sharp 45 degree angle. And whenever I'm putting my flowers into my container, I'm never putting them in completely um, vertically. I'm always sort of putting them in slightly at an angle, which I think gives it a little bit more of a natural feel than a very sort of rigid feel. And again, I'm just trimming off some of these like big flowers that I don't necessarily need. I'm going to break this into a couple of different parts again. I like this piece right here. I'm going to put this into the Side here. And again, because it's going to be an all sided arrangement, I'm looking to kind of green up all the way around. And again, I'm still breaking off of just this one, one piece of basil that I have because she's quite big. So probably not even going to need that much of my basil. Again, I was cutting off that big kind of middle part just because I don't want it. I'm going to cut this again a little bit smaller. So now I have this kind of shorty piece that I'm going to put onto the back side. So it's sort of doing the same thing as the other side. And again, I have this shorty piece. Whenever you have anything that's really kind of short stem like this, you want to make sure that it's actually all going into your water. That's the one thing that is very important is you want to make sure all of your stems are actually in the water. Okay, and then I have this little scraggly piece left here. And because I have a lot of, I would say, big flowers that are going to be happening, 
I'm not going to green any more of my basil because the basil is slightly delicate and you don't want it to be smushied too much by the rest of the flower. So I'm gonna hold off on using the rest of my basil for now. And I'm gonna then go in with my larger pieces and then come back in at the end to fill in with the basil. And in case any of it kind of gets lost um, in the mix of things, then I can have some extra ones that I can put in that people can actually then see. Um, because I do think that the basil is quite lovely and you don't want it to be completely uh, smothered. All right, so again, sort of the same on both sides. I'm looking at this, this is a little crazy. So we're gonna see if it actually ends up staying like that or not, but let's go in with our um, next element. And what I like to do with um, this sort of arrangement is because I know I have some really big pieces like these celosia, this coxcomb, like this is gonna take up a lot of real estate. So I wanna make sure that I'm gonna get these in first where I want them to go. That way they're not going to um, smush or crush any of the other flowers. Um, I'm actually just going to use three of them. I like to do things in odd numbers. It makes it a little bit more interesting for design. It's easy to then triangulate off of odd numbers as well. Uh, I'm gonna pull off some of these bottom leaves just because they're not super attractive. I might leave a couple of on so it's not naked, but it doesn't need to have that whole um, leafy scenario going on. So what I'm gonna do with these is use these as kind of an anchor and they're going to be somewhat low in the arrangement. And again, because there's three, I'm gonna make this kind of triangular pattern with it. This is a good stem that you can see the really sharp 45 degree angle that I'm using when I'm cutting my flowers. And what this does is it just gives it a little bit more surface area for the water to then be absorbed. So I'm gonna think about this in terms of, again, a triangle. So I'm gonna do a one, two, and then three. And you'll see that in just a second. And again, see the way some of these bottom leaves are a little scraggly looking. So I'm just gonna take those off. And I'm gonna want this next one to be a little bit lower than this one. So then this one is gonna sit So this one is sitting sort of on the lip of the container, if you can see. And this already, this, this basil over here, uh, it looks crazy. So I'm gonna just take this out for now. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. And that's, again, one of the things that's, I think, such a nice benefit to having chicken wire is that you can take things in and out and not have to worry about the structural integrity of your arrangement. So I think it's this big um, flower stem here that's causing it to be a little bit wonky looking. So now it's much shorter. Tuck her back in there. Yeah, I'm much happier with that. Okay, so again, I've got one, two, and like I said, I'm gonna make this into a triangular pattern. So the third one is gonna go here. Again, I'm pulling off any of the spiraggly leaves. So if you don't have this kind of celosia, um, you wanna use what's gonna be your biggest bloom. So um, whatever is sort of your most dense big bloom that's in sort of a round pattern, um, that's the flower that you're going to use for this part right here. And so again, this one now is going to come in right here. I'm gonna tuck that in. So as you can see, I've now created this triangular pattern. Okay, does anyone have any questions about what's happening so far? 
we got a great question from Kathy asking about whether you use preservatives in the water when you're making arrangements ahead of time, such as for our galas or something else where they're not going in the mansion and that that importance of plain fresh water is lessened. Oh. What I do is <clears throat> whenever I process flowers, so whenever I get them out from the garden or from the wholesale, I use a solution. It's a hydrating solution uh, at that time. So once all of the stems are being recut and they're being put into fresh water before they're about to go into cooler, that's when I use the um, floral preserve or hydration uh, formula. And then that's it. I don't use anything else. Um, sometimes for the gallop, no, I, th I think we didn't use anything. We didn't use anything for the gala either. Again, because we don't want to have anything sort of spill and then stain the linens on the table. Um, but I think otherwise, no. So otherwise, it's just uh, I do the floral preserve um, when I'm processing the flowers. Thank you. Okay. So again, the next thing we're going to do. Um, is go in with our second solosha, which is this plume solosha, which I absolutely love. It's a really fun kind of, this is like an antique pink color, which I'm quite a big fan of. So again, I'm gonna pull off any leaves that I think aren't all that great, but these are really nice leaves, as you can see. So I, I am gonna leave some of these on. And this I'm going to use as my, again, another sort of point of visual reference as to how big and how wide my arrangement is going to be. And I love that this has like the little tip on it because that sort of indicates this is the top of the arrangement. So I want this to be a little bit taller, which I cut this one too short, so that's not going to work there. Hold on to that one for a second. All right. Let's try this one. I'll try this again. So this time, I'm gonna actually look at it and see how long it needs to be. So I need to keep almost the whole length of the stem. There it is. Okay. So then this is not wanting to stay. Let me find another spot there. Okay, so this is gonna be again my really high sort of tall reference. And from here, I'm gonna go in again and then triangulate off of that. So now I can use this sort of shorty one and I'm gonna come in down here for the next spot where it's gonna go. And then I think I'm gonna have one more here. And if you got the ones from the pickup, you'll notice some of them are really monstrous. And what I would do with this is I wouldn't use this as one big one. I would break it down, take off these sort of smaller pieces, the smaller little plumes. So I have something that's a little bit more manageable in size. But I'm actually gonna use this skinnier one And she's going to come back here. So now I've got three this way. I'm going to put another one right here. And again, because I'm trying to work off of odd numbers, although I will say I kind of like the four. So we're going to scrap the whole odd numbers thing for now because I like the way just the four of them look. Um, but we might come back and revisit that. But we'll see. I'm going to put those off to the side for now. But again, now, so I've made this sort of taller element of the arrangement which I'm quite happy with.
we have questions? We do not right now. Excellent. So then I'm going to go in with my zinnias. And I just, I love this um, particular cultivar of zinnia. This is called the Queen Anne Lime series. And so it has um, a little bit of this antique look to it which I'm always a big fan of. And again, this has a lot of foliage going on. So I'm gonna actually take off the foliage from my zinnias. Because this foliage will also start to turn brown relatively. It'll turn brown faster than the flower actually um, holds up. So you wanna make your zinnia naked. And I'm gonna start to take this element and I'm going to make it a little bit higher and out from my solution. So you see how this one is now in the same space, but it's up and it's elevated out. And what this is doing is it's giving it a little bit of depth. And I'm going to go in with different colors of my Celosia or my Zinnia. Actually, I'm going to save this one because it's got a little bud on it. So I'm going to just put this over here, save it for later. Maybe we'll do something like that. And again, I'm mimicking where the Celosia is and the Zinnia. So I'm putting them just on a higher, um, more spaced out plane than the celosia. I also see right here that there's like a broken flower piece. So I'm just gonna snip that. Off. All right, I'm gonna go in with one more for now. And again, this is gonna go in to where I have my solution. But I have more zinnias and I want to use them all. So the next thing I'm going to do is then look around, see areas that might need a little bit of fun and excitement, like right here. So I'm going to go in with a zinnia here. And again, I want these zinnias to sort of sit up and out a little bit from the container because they are so beautiful and you want them to kind of be showcased. Again, I think that this area right here could be a little zinnia. And Amy, we just got a question about if there is any guidance or a rule to help explain the height for your container and for your arrangement. Typically, it is one and a half times the height of your container is going to be your arrangement. Um, a lot of times, I think it's just sort of a good rule of thumb, just because if you have like a really short container, you don't want this massive arrangement that's going to make it unstable. Um, but then again, you know, there are times when you want something that's like low and compact, and it's not going to be nearly one and a half times the size of your container. So you kind of want to really like figure out what vessel you're using and then kind of go from there. Like this one, I, again, I think would look really strange if it was really short and all it only had like really tiny short flowers in it. Or again, if it was like super, super tall, it would also look out of balance. So you kind of want to eyeball it as well and see, you know, what actually visually looks well with it. Excellent. Thank you so much. And I also just want to share that Linda mentioned she used both basil and tarragon from her garden and that it smells amazing. Oh yeah. Tarragon is also a favorite um, herb of mine to use in arrangements as well. All right, so I'm just going in with the rest of my zinnias and I just put this gal in down here. And again, I'm doing it so that they're not so everything is at different sort of heights and depths 
which um, gives it a little bit more visual interest, I think. And speaking of that staggered height, Alicia just uh, said that her zinnias are shorter than her celosia are, and wonders if that means she should cut the celosia so that those zinnias can be the tall, showy ones, or if you're just looking for that variety of height either way. Just, just the variety of height. It doesn't necessarily have to be that the celosia is the tallest or the zinnia is the tallest. Um, it's really whatever you find uh, that you like and how your arrangement is going. So it doesn't necessarily have to, you don't have to like cut down anything. You can just sort of let it be the way it is. Excellent. Thanks, Amy. All right, I'm going to put in one more zinnia. All right, I'm going to put in my last zinnia. Let's do one more. These zinnias are just so fun. I'm going to put one more in over here. Okay, so I now have all of my little zinnias in my arrangement. From here, I'm gonna go in with my marigolds. And again, the marigolds are gonna kind of act as the, the same sort of thing with the zinnias because it's the same shape, but some of my marigolds are smaller. So I'm going to start putting these in and I can see I have this hole right here. You can see that. So I'm gonna go in and fill in with some marigolds into that spot. I'm gonna take my marigolds. I am gonna strip down all of these like little tiny leaves just because they will start to brown very quickly. And again, I'm looking at this and I see that there's a hole, a visual hole. So I'm gonna fill that. And I'm gonna tuck in this marigold down into it. So you can see right here how I've tucked that in. It's still a little bit taller than my celosia, um, but it's now sort of filling in some of those emptier spaces. Um, again, I see sort of an empty space right here. And because this is such a bright color, it's going to show up even if it's not front and center. Ooh, these are super strong too. I personally love the smell of marigolds. I know some people don't like it as much. But again, see, I just put it in here. I've tucked it down in, but again, because of its really nice bright color, it still stands out and it's really giving it a nice kind of volume to it. And then, Gosh, starting to run out of room. All right, I'm gonna go in. And again, if you did get materials from Hillwood, you're gonna have a lot left over that is not going to all fit into your container, just so you know. So you'll be able to maybe make two arrangements or you'll be able to, you know, put the flowers into other containers to uh, fill up your house. Again, I just put this one in here. So as you can see from the side view, it's nice and sort of tucked in away from my zinnia. I really don't think I can, I mean, I can always shove you some more things, in, but we'll see. Yeah, I'm going to try and get a marigold in down here. Because what I have left are what I'm going to call my little uh, bits of whimsy that are going to be in the arrangement, which is the gumfrina and also the black eyed seasons or the rubecchia. Because those are I'm only going to use like a couple of them. And they're very small sort of delicate um, flowers. But I think that is actually good for the marigolds. I'm gonna put these other marigolds back over here. here for now. Okay, so as you can see, what I've done 
is I really use these marigolds as like the bright spot and tuck them in so that again, it's giving it a lot of depth and it's also giving it like a nice kind of bold brightness to it. All right, if there are no questions, I'm gonna continue on with my black eyed Susan. And again, if you were able to pick up materials from Hillwood, these are actually from the cutting garden. And as you can see, um, I'm gonna stand back a little bit so you can see that this is one step. So obviously I'm not gonna try and put this one step into my arrangement. I'm going to start to break it down so that I have smaller elements and almost individual flowers. So I've got this one stem with just two on there, but I'm looking at this one and she's looking a little sad. She looks like she's seen better days. And then I just cut that off. So now I've just got one single little black eyed Susie. I'm gonna keep it long in stem because what I'm gonna do is have these sort of sit up out from my arrangement. That's a little too tall, that's a little crazy. And Amy, we just got a question from Sarah about whether you could use ivy as a as one of the greens in an arrangement like this. Of course, you can use just about anything that strikes your fancy. And I actually made an arrangement that I'll show you after I'm done with this one that I just used herbs and vegetables from the cutting garden. So as you can see, what I've done with this Black Eyed Susan is I have her up propped away from the other flowers. So it's giving it again, just a little bit more um, volume, but not really heavy volume, if that makes sense. And again, I'm looking at these and I'm just gonna snip off the ones that aren't at their best. And I'm just, again, adding this in as my little touch of whimsy. So I'm not really even gonna add in that many but I just think it adds a really kind of fun element to the arrangement. I'm gonna do maybe two more. And when you have elements like this that you're, are very sort of light and airy and that are coming out from your arrangement, it also helps to sort of make it seem and appear much fuller and bigger than it actually is. I saw there's one little teeny tiny baby black eyed Susie that I think is adorable. I wanted to use that. So you can see just a little teeny tiny. And I think I'm gonna have her kind of come out. There is that one, that little cutie. And I feel like there's just one more spot right here that could use a little whimsy. And it's gonna be this one. And so now I'm going to do the exact same thing with the gonfrina that I have. And I know some of you have um, gonfrina in several different colors. I'm just going to use one color, but I think using all three colors or like two colors is also kind of fun as well. And again, I'm going to go in to spots that I think could use just a little bit of dimension and spots that kind of need just one slight little pop of something. 
All right, in here, I feel like there's a bit of a hole. Let's see, too short. Again, I'm taking off a lot of these leaves off of my Gofrina as well. Getting a little tight and crowded in here, which means that I'm gonna have to end this soon. <laughs> Not gonna be able to get anything else in here. All right, let's just try. There we go. There it is. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna do just one more. Gonna put one more back here. I have that one there. And now I'm gonna kind of look at her, see what's going on. And I still wanna fill in with a little bit of basil. So especially at the bottom of my arrangement here. I want to kind of cover that up a little bit. So I'm going to put some basil down towards the base of my arrangement. And what this is going to do is it's just going to also kind of help to cover up the mechanics of that tape. I mean, I know tape is very exciting, but I don't know if you want to necessarily see it on your container. So I'm just going around and kind of filling in the bottom part of my arrangement so that I don't see all of this tape scenario. And it helps to kind of fill it in a bit too. really does smell amazing. Okay, so as you can see, I'm really filling in the bottom areas with this basil. And then I'm also gonna look and see if there's any areas that could use a little bit of volume. Like I think this right here could use a little bit of volume. So I'm gonna have this basil come out from the arrangement a bit. So that again, it's giving it a little bit of dimension and a little bit more excitement. So there's one spot right in here that I find to be irksome. So I'm gonna go in with a little bit of basil to just fill in this little gap that was right here, which, voila, much better. I have one more spot that I think I wanna add just a bit more basil. And again, it's getting, it's getting kind of tight in here. So I'm gonna have to end all of the shenanigans soon because it's not gonna, not gonna be able to fit too much more in here. This is really pretty though. So I'm gonna use that. Again, I'm just looking to see where there are some spaces because I was doing that thing where I have the zinnias coming out a little bit more from the arrangement and I'm going in and kind of tweaking those right now so that they do have some space, but you don't want it to be just sort of empty looking stem space. So that's why I was going in with some of this basil to kind of fill that in so it doesn't look too naked. 
All right. I think I am happy with that. I just clean this up for a second. Can you still be? I don't know. And then kind of see the arrangement. Now what I'm gonna do, Kinds of gorgeous, Amy. Now, let's see the whole thing. I'm going to let's see what side do I like the best. I think I like this as my front. I'm just going to hold up my little container or my piece of fabric so that you can see the arrangement. And then, like I said, I have done another one that I used um, this amazing local pottery studio called Pinkley Pottery. Um, it's in Georgetown. Uh, one of our volunteers um, does pottery there. And I thought it would be really kind of fun to do something in this unique and homemade um, picture that she did. And I just used tomatoes, basil. I have um, chives that are in bloom right now, some sweet peas, uh, these tomatillos that were growing in the garden. And these which are one of my favorites. They're these little tiny uh, cucamelons. And I use the vine as well. So you can always forage in your own garden if you have one and just sort of see that it doesn't always have to just be about flowers in the summer. A lot of times you can just use herbs and vegetables and things like that to really kind of, again, make something I think that is really quite fun and also um, easy, something easy that you can then do as well if you don't necessarily have a full cutting garden. So I'm going to put this gal back over here. Bring this back into the fold. And now, what questions do you have for me? So far, questions are quiet. I did, as promised earlier, drop some links into the chat for more information about our September 24th Pressed Flower Workshop. That will take place in person at Hillwood, as well as the link to our next virtual floral design workshop, which will be in October. I'm going to give folks just another minute or two to make sure that we get any questions. Oh, Linda just asked how long you would expect a floral arrangement to last. This should last um, at least a week. Uh, some of the, the flowers might kind of zinnia sometimes if they get a little temperamental, they'll, um, you'll see their little heads will like snap down. Um, and the black eyed Susan's will sometimes last for a week. Sometimes you'll see them start to go within a couple of days. But like the Celosia will last a long time. The Marigolds will last a long time. And so will the, um, the Gonfrida. Fabulous. Linda also asked if you change the water frequently. I think it's ideal. I don't obviously um, in the mansion pieces and the visitor center. But if I had something like this at my house, I would dump out the water every couple of days and put in fresh water because that will definitely help uh, prolong it as well. Keeping it out of direct sunlight um, is also something that will help prolong it. And also keeping it away from any like 
like a, you know, too much heat or anything like that. Fabulous. We've also gotten a couple of questions in the chat about the recording of this video. That will join Hillwood's public program archive on YouTube, ideally early next week. Um, and we'll see if we can, if we're able to get it up faster. But I do know that our, the team that does that has a couple of other big things to prepare for over this weekend. Um, Linda asked another question about whether you occasionally trim stems when you change water or if you just replace the water. I just replace the water. Excellent. Unless you want to remake the whole arrangement, obviously trimming the stems would be great, but then it's remaking an entire arrangement again. So that's up to you. <laughs> Excellent. Well, I see that we've got a few folks who are joining us on camera and who look like they might be ready to show off. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and ask folks who are ready to do that to please turn on your cameras and we'll kind of cycle through, make sure everybody gets to share and ask any questions about their specific arrangement. Um, I'm going to ask Peggy to come on screen first. Hi. Hi. So this is somehow I minimize my screen, so I'm very small, and I don't want to mess with the I don't want to mess with the software. But can you see this? Yeah, no, it looks fantastic. So I I didn't I went to my local I went to Broad Branch Market and got flowers this morning because you had nice. them there at Hillwood. So you know I used mums and some are in different condition, other better condition than others. But what do you think? No, I love it. Yeah, and I think like the I think the thing that makes it fun is that again it is you know, a wonderful time of year to be able to like, get all different kinds of flowers. So I love that you do have the good variety of uh, mixture in there as well. Thanks. Gorgeous. It was fun. Thank you. All right, let's see. It looks like Diana is there. I'm gonna ask you to unmute. Okay. Oh, I love the hydrangea. And uh, it looks like you have Joe Pie weed in there as well. Wonderful. Oops, you could see this. Yeah, it looks gorgeous. And I like that you added in grass as your little touch of whimsy. I think that's a really nice element to it. Mm, thank you. Thank you. All right, and we did just get a question from Deborah who said she will be following along at home after the fact and um, said she is looking forward to sharing it on Instagram. If you want to tag us at Hillwood Museum, that would be lovely. You can also, um, we don't have a floral hashtag, floral workshop hashtag, but if that's something that's of interest, please let me know and we'd be happy to come up with one to make this a regular feature each month. Yeah, that would be fantastic. It could just be like a, flor a Hillwood floral workshop, something like that as a hashtag that we could come up with for sure. I love it. All right, Susan, it looks like you are ready. So I'm gonna see if I can add you on screen and let's see what you've come up with. Let me try one more time to ask you to, to unmute. Can you hear me now? Yeah, perfect. perfect. Yes, hi. So I did run in a question, but I, it, my, my technology with the back and forth is kind of hard. But my, one of my questions was on the first green, um, the greenery at the very beginning, did you actually cut off like parts of the limb or did you just cut on the bottom? Because a lot of mine had a lot of pieces coming out of it. Yes, so I was cutting off from the limbs. So um, like this kind of scenario, I was like actually taking off the shorter, the shorter branches. Okay, okay. I, I didn't do that, but I, I did a little bit. So I'll just try to show you if you can see. Not sure. Oh, no, I feel it's great though. Yeah. Can you see? Yeah, no, it looks beautiful. Okay. Um, I could also my um, let's see if I can. Uh, do I have you in front of it or not? Uh, 
I'm not sure how, how am I supposed to just turn this around? Wait a minute, I'm not, not doing this well. I'm sorry. I think I had the same problem before. Um, yeah, if you can just tilt it down slightly. There it is. Perfect. Is that good? And if you can just tilt it up just a little. Right there. Mm. Oh, yeah, that looks gorgeous. Absolutely Thank gorgeous. You. Thank you. So um, my, I forgot what these are called, but these were not tall, so I couldn't really make them tall. So I added in a few more of these, you know, to sort of balance it out. Yeah, no, I think that's, that's fantastic. And again, you know, because these are all uh, farm flowers, you know, uh, the size and the stems are always sort of varied as well. So yeah. things aren't going to be identical, not like when you're having something come out of like a greenhouse that yeah. sort of scenario. But no, I think what you did with that looks fantastic. Thank Great. you. Thank Great you. Job. Really fun. Thank you. Who's next? I am going to ask Linda to come on screen next. There I am, unmuted. Hi. Yeah. Hi. So I, I didn't color. have a pitcher, so I just put it in a regular container. <laughs> but this is my tarragon. I love from it. The garden, and I just love the feathery look of it a lot. Yeah. And I ended up with sunflowers and the Fuji mums, because that's what my store had. No, so. it's wonderful. And I love the fact that you did add in tarragon to kind of bring yeah, it. Yeah, and then there's a basil sort of... in there. And I yeah. also have some, uh, this is a sage plant. Oh, wonderful. So, yeah, I'm, I have a really big herb garden. It's like, I'm gonna do all herbs next time. Yeah, I, you know, I sometimes fun. think like just herbs in a, a container is a wonderful, because it's yeah, so Yeah, like with my chives things. when they're all yeah. in bloom, that'd be yeah. super cute. So anyhow, that was a great uh, uh, experience for me. Thanks so much. Oh, I love it, thank you. It's beautiful. All right. So Zine? Yes, hi. Um, well, I went this morning to pick up these amazing flowers. I am so glad I did. Um, and um, this is what I came up with. I love it. It looks beautiful. Thank you. I'm um I'm very happy with um with it. And there were enough flowers to do. It, so it looks good from all sides. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it looks gorgeous. Thank you. Had fun. Thank you. I will definitely be at your next um, next presentation. Oh, Excellent. You. Wonderful to hear. I'm going to ask Maddie to tell us what that beautiful view is of. Oh, that looks gorgeous. Let's see. Um. <laughs> Can you hear me? No. Yeah. Yes. You can. It's yeah. actually it's Althea on my daughter's Zoom somehow. So, <laughs> but um, <laughs> don't know why my iPad has that. But I love these flowers. These are just gorgeous. So I'm really happy with them. And look, see in the buckets, I have enough to make another um, <laughs> later. Yeah, but definitely. Yeah. But and the other side, I think, looks um equally nice yeah it's That's gorgeous it. yeah so i thank you um and it you, you gave me a little courage to have more things sticking out than usual which definitely <laughs> gave it a better dimension so thank yeah. you oh it looks wonderful thanks thanks i'm looking forward to making the next one <laughs> excellent yeah i'm gonna see if we can get nancy to come on screen Hello. Hello. I don't know if we can get this yeah. over there. Oh yeah. No, it looks great. My varieties of flowers were a bit different from yours, but I love the colors that are in there. Yeah, I think that's one of the fun things with like any kind of flowers that you get from your local farm stand or you know flower market because everything I always think all colors look nice together. That looks gorgeous. Oh, thank you. It was fun. Good. Good to see you. You too. 
And then I'm going to ask Beth and Steve to come on. Oh, well, those look gorgeous. Hi there. It's actually Beth and Sarah, but <laughs> Steve's playing golf. So. <laughs> Thank you so much. These flowers are out of control. They're so pretty. Yep. Beautiful. Oh, yay. Yeah. They, well, those look both look gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Thank you. All right, let's see. I'm going to ask Hannah to come on. Hi, don't mind me. I'm just Hi. making my second one. Um, <laughs> so let me just flip around. This is the big one. Oh, it's gorgeous. Yeah, beautiful. So, and then this is my second one. <laughs> with a vase that I picked up off the street this morning. Oh, I love so. it. Oh, good. Oh, I'm glad that you're able to do too as well. That's beautiful. Oh, those are gorgeous. Excellent. Thank you, Hannah. I'm going to spotlight Sylvia. Can you tell us a little bit about your arrangement? Here with my computer. Um, oh, there it is. Um, oh, gorgeous. Yeah, so Lovely. this was so much fun uh, with these flowers, and I had a lot left over also. So I'm going to start on the next yeah. arrangement uh, in a few wonderful. minutes. Wonderful. <laughs> thank you, Amy. This is wonderful. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It looks gorgeous. Beautiful job. That's a good job. All right. Well, I'm going to stall for just a moment here because I think I have put everybody who is on camera up as a spotlight so we can take a look at your beautiful work. But if you want to show off and I missed you, please wave frantically. I want to make sure we can see everybody's gorgeous arrangements. All right, people are starting to turn their cameras off. So I'm going to take that <laughs> as a sign that I we did get to look at everyone's beautiful work. Um, just want to thank everyone again for spending your Friday afternoon with us. And to let you know, we look forward to seeing you next month. I put a couple of times into the chat. Next month's workshop will be in person for those of you in the DC area. And that is a pressed flowers workshop. That's actually going to be led by one of our other colleagues, Sue Laykin and Jessica Bonilla will be leading that. And then in October, Amy and I will be back here on Zoom with you all. Flowers are available for that, as well as for the November workshop, which is posted on our website as well. So I hope that we will see you soon in person or online and enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thank you.